Good morning. Welcome to Grassy Waters. My name is Edward Munoz. I love to come here to photograph anything from the very small to the very big. What's very big? Well, how about an alligator? Is that big enough for you? Very small? You never know. If you look close enough, you'll find some very interesting things. So it's early in the morning. We're going to look around. I've already spotted a limkin over there having this breakfast. So we'll look and see what's uh, interesting to shoot today. It's funny, but uh, the bigger wildlife doesn't like to stay in the lit up places. They usually look for shadows, bushes, so they're not that easy to, to see. You've got to look for them. And over there, something, something's moving. No, just a plant waving in the breeze. I don't know whether the camera can catch all the water lilies, water yeah. lily plants. They're very interesting. Uh, two years ago, I took a macro of a blooming flower on the water lily and was uh, fortunate to win first prize uh, in the contest that they have here annually. I'll show you a picture of that later on today. Right now, what I usually start here, if I don't see anything, I start to move over towards the center and around the boardwalk. So let's take a little walk. We're, we're on the boardwalk, right, that wraps around the visitor center. There's a great big blue heron spying its prey. Let's see if we can sneak up on it without disturbing it. not going to move any closer. I don't like disturbing their normal process of gathering food and in this case stalking this breakfast. If we're lucky he'll catch something and we can see him have breakfast. Probably 10 years We've, since we first got here as winter, re, as winter residents in 2014. And how did you discover this place? Uh, well, I always look, I, first I Google uh, wildlife preserves and then go from there. But a great staff here. And Grassy Waters is where most of the filtering of our drinking water on Palm Beach County occurs. Yes, I heard. So it's, um, it's an important place for us, as well as a fun place to come and see, uh, see nature. So you see a small ring-necked duck, which is a male, and we think it's here for this season, looking maybe to um, get his group of females as a first-year male. 
And then we also have the great blue heron, which is something that we see pretty this, commonly this is the duck. here in the preserve. I'm going to leave a picture over there. They are so He's beautiful. doing a lot of diving, but we think it's a young male probably looking, looking for, to, for his tribe. Yeah. But um, we don't see them very often. We, we don't see them in here hardly ever. And I haven't gone and looked, but I think their range, typical range, may be a little more north. Someone was telling me who goes to Green Cay and Wakota Hatchie, and I'm sure you do. Yeah, um, I do. They have not seen that down at Green Cay or Wakota uh, Hatchie. It's, it's been in my back pond. Not, I haven't seen them lately, but in February. Uh huh. Are you were, here in the gardens? Uh, yeah, I'm in. Uh, uh, Frenchman's Creek. Okay. So, so. But for us, it's new, so we're kind of excited. That is very exciting. And I hope he gets some others to join up with him, but yeah, little little solitary, Beautiful. solitary man. Yeah. I shifted my uh, focus to look for the small, and I was, sometimes when you look close, you see frogs, snakes. Um, I noticed a lot of dragonflies flying around. I even they, hear them. They, they, uh, they make nice close-up macro pictures if they stay in one place long enough. Most of wildlife photography is about luck and patience. Patience pays off if you have the time. And if you come to us to the same place often enough, you learn the habits of the wildlife. Like, for example, this area, I know mainly in the afternoon, the kite, which is like a predator bird that hunts snails, they love to float around, dive down into the grass, and come up with a snail. That usually happens in the late afternoon. Spring is my favorite season because you get the I love to catch birds in flight. They're not easy to catch, but um, that one just barely caught got the uh, the lens. I'll be able to crop it, nice. um, but um, spring is interesting because you, spring and fall, because you get all the migratory action. You get the wildlife, the birds, the ducks coming and going. So that's the most exciting seasons. Um, winter and summer, not so much, but uh, even then you can find interesting things. Florida is lucky because it has a lot of permanent residents of wildlife. And uh, you're never at a loss. What are some of the permanent uh, birds that uh, you've seen here over and over? Well, the great blue is permanent. Um, you see it almost every season. The white egret, the... Um, is also permanent. Rosiette spoonbills, you can always find. They're, they're very nice to photograph. Uh, the woodpeckers are all, all, all year round. Um, whether it's the ladderback wood, wood, woodpecker or the pileated one, which is the big one with the big red head, um, they're nice to catch. And the um, the predators, 
the osprey, always here, always fishing, beautiful pictures, uh, red shoulder hawk. So those are some of the um, permanent uh, Florida residents. The alligator, of course. Uh, I, I don't particularly care for photographing alligators, but I do. I've got some interesting shots of them. I'll share with you someday. You are becoming an expert out here. Hey, yeah, you kind of have to be to uh, to kind of enjoy, get, get the full enjoyment. And I'll tell you, I'm very lucky that my wife is a birder, so she passes on a lot of that information to me. I think I got it from my dad, who had an interest in photography. He always had a camera around. He had a little uh, drugstore business. And part of what he did was he offered film development. Back in those days, you took your brownie out, shot 12 shots in a roll, and took the roll to the drugstore to get developed. And that's what he did. And he taught me how to work the dark room and develop the pictures. So that's how I first got my, my interest in photography. And uh, I kind of let it go for a while, focused on studies. But as I went through my career, I was fortunate enough to get into management and as such had to fly all over the world. And so I visited just about every continent. Um, I lived in Mexico City for three, three years with my wife. I uh, lived in Germany two different times, once for four years, once for three years. <laughs> Practically lived in Japan for, for a while. I went there so often. So all these places gave me a, a, a shot in the arm in terms of how beautiful, how diverse, and how interesting our um, planet is. And so when I retired, I got into that habit. We lived in the Northeast, so during the winter, I would um, develop pictures I'd taken, mat them, hang them. Then digital came along and changed the whole thing. Um, that's a moorhen. It's a red-beaked duck that you can recognize the sound, and the, nobody moves like the like the uh, like the moorhen. Uh, they have an exaggerated neck a action. Anyway, <clears throat> that's how I got into uh, photography. This this takes one or two. That's uh, 128 gigabytes. That's a lot. And the the SH. That's another 128. So that would be a lot of roll of film you'd have to carry. I'd need a wagon. That's two. That's 200. And 250 gigas. So, a lot of pictures. So now you had started doing shooting film. My first trip to Alaska, I remember taking 10 rolls of uh, 30. Wow. Which I thought was like amazing, enormous. That's 300 pictures. Which is not even close. Uh, I do that in half a day now. So now, you, when you were processing, did you go to a company to get a process, or you had a lab in your house to do the processing? Well, I initially, I, I had my own development. I had darkroom, enlarger, the whole bit. But um, the... The commercial labs became so cheap, and then digital came along, and it's all no ball game. Changed everything.
This is an example of color and texture that um, is in one of my pictures that was lucky enough to win the grand prize here at Grassy Waters Photo Contest in 2021. It's a picture of a budding water lily, which is yellow at that stage. It had just rained. So as the rain subsided, I looked over the, fen the, the fencing and spotted this little beauty and noticed the rain beads that had butted up. So I took this picture, called it Rain Beads Me Up. And I, I did some editing in this picture, mainly on the background because I was interested to see whether the background would affect the way the picture comes out. It does. If you make it all dark, it pops out the picture more, but there's something unnatural about it. If you bring out all the shadows, you see what's in the background, but again, then you kind of lose the focus on, on the, the subject. So this is actually fairly close to what my camera actually took, which highlighted the green stem, but left the rest of the background kind of dark. I decided to mat, mat it. Uh, matting helps focus the picture. And this is an unframed version of the picture. So that's... That kind of puts it in perspective. To me, there's, there's, our brain has two sides, the creative artistic side and the analytical um, intellectual, if you will, side. But I don't think it can function without utilizing both sides. Uh, it just doesn't jive, I don't think. Um, in fact, I'm a scientist. I have an engineering degree, a polymer chemistry degree. I've always been interested in the cosmos as my role model uh, used to say, Carl Sagan. But if you look at the scientific advances in the physical and macro world. You start talking about, or they start talking about, equations that mimic music, that mimic the waves of sound and music and lyrics. Uh, so they meld somewhere down the line. And I think the sooner they do for us, the more full, satisfying, and productive lives we can all lead. Thank you.